Hey, it's Jim, and this is level one of the CFA program, the topic on fixed income and the learning module on yield-based bond duration measures and properties. This is a direct extension of the previous learning module on interest rate risk. And you might remember that during that previous recording, I emphasized to you that when you think about interest rate risk, you have to think about both duration and convexity. Now, the good news is that the very next learning module is entitled Yield-Based Bond Convexity. So I'm guessing that you guys ought to think of these three learning modules kind of as one big one. You should watch them consecutively and you should work on those problems at the end of the learning modules cons consecutively. Now, quickly remind you that in the, in the interest rate risk learning module, we showed you how to compute the Macaulay duration using an Excel spreadsheet and using that simplified formula. You also might remember I told you, remember how to do one or both of those methods. You probably don't know, know, know you probably don't need to know both of those. So what's my point here in the introduction? When you think of interest rate ri risk, think of duration, which we'll talk about in these learning outcome statements, and then think about convexity, which we'll talk about in the next recording. So we're gonna go ahead and have to define and interpret and explain. We did that back in interest rate risk. We'll, al we'll also do that in the convexity learning module. We're gonna have to also calculate. Now we calculated Macaulay duration before, we're gonna calculate modified duration, we're gonna calculate money duration, and we're gonna calculate what I think of as kind of price duration, but the reading calls it the price value of a basis point. Uh, some people call it a present value of a basis point or a dollar value of a basis point. But what we know from bond pricing, and let's go ahead and start the, uh, the slide deck here. We know from bond pricing that when yields go up, bond prices go down. We're investigating that relationship because we're calling that interest rate risk. You might remember that I told you that duration is a measure of interest rate risk, and it is a first derivative of the price yield relationship. And the Institute does go ahead and take you through the steps of taking the very first derivative of that relationship. And it's about four or five lines in there. And it brought me back to my days uh, back in my doctoral program. I love to see uh, first derivatives and second derivatives. Uh, that's probably not too important for you guys. What is important is that third gray box there. When you take that first derivative, the duration is the measure of the slope at that particular point, which is assuming a linear bond price and bond yield relationship. Now in the next learning module, we're going to do convexity, which is going to look at the nonlinearity of that relationship. And we're going to compute what's known as a convexity adjustment. That's for a future conversation, but keep that in the back of your mind that this is just our conversation on duration is just uh, the first part of it. Notice that first, I'm sorry, the fourth gray box, the relationship is nonlinear. So we have to make a convexity adjustment. We'll do that sometime in the future. All right, what do we know? We know that when uh, yields go up, bond prices fall. When yields go down, bond prices increase. So this whole concept of duration is going to allow us to differentiate between this yield duration, which we say something like, all right, if the yield on our specific bond changes, what happens to its price? But then we ask the question, let's suppose that the yield on our bond does not change, but the, bond, the yield on the benchmark bond changes. Ah, we call that curve duration. So that's going to allow us to differentiate between yield and curve duration. So let's go ahead and start with these yield duration measures. We'll go ahead and work through Macaulay duration, which we did before, modified duration, then money duration, and then the price duration. Now, please recall from the interest rate risk learning module that that the formula that we gave you had three variables, time to maturity, coupon rate, and yield to maturity, which are the exact same three input variables that you need to determine the price. So those three inputs will help you determine the bond duration as well. Those are the only three inputs that you need. 
Now, remember that when we use our five time value of money buttons on our calculator, do you remember I called that the kindergarten bond pricing model? We just enter those four input variables and then we solve for the price. That's a super simple model. But then we complexified it by saying, you know what? That kindergarten model assumes that the yield to maturity is constant throughout the life of the bond. Maybe we called it a uh, flat sloped uh, yield curve. But what we know is that yield curves can be upward or downward sloping. So remember, we use spot rates to compute that price of the bond. So what we're going to do now here is we're going to say something like, boy, when we use those spot rates, if there are large changes in the bond, or if those bonds have specific features, like a put feature, or a convertible feature, or a call feature, or some other crazy feature out there, what we need to do is that we need to say something like the kindergarten model is not very good. The spot curve model is better, but it's not perfect. But what we're going to do is we're going to use these measures of duration to give us a more accurate picture of what's going to happen to the price of the bond when our yield changes or when the benchmark yield changes. This is so much fun stuff. I could talk about duration and convexity for thousands of years. All right, I want you to uh, I want to introduce this concept of a modified duration. I want you to look down at the purple box. The modified duration is super simple. All we're going to do is take that Macaulay duration from the previous uh, recording and divide it by one plus the yield to maturity, one plus R in that purple box. What that does is this modified duration is going to allow us, and let me go back here quickly, it's going to allow us to compute a more accurate potential bond price when yields change. Remember, let me repeat this. I think it's worth repeating. The, the kindergarten model, it does an okay job. The spot curve model, it does a better than okay job. But the modified duration model is going gonna, is gonna to do a much better than okay job of computing that uh, future bond price. So I want you to think about this. Suppose we have bond price here over on the left hand column of an Excel spreadsheet. And then as we work our way over time, you know, think of column one, two, three, four, five on a five year bond, and we can have all the different possible yield changes in the future. Now in level two, we're going to call this an interest rate tree. And you guys are going to scratch your head when I, when I introduce this, uh, with this interest rate tree, you're going to say, man, Jim, this is very complex. And I'm going to convince you that you can do it because the Institute, uh, they love to ask yield curves and interest rate tree questions. But I want you to think about this Excel spreadsheet. And what we're going to do is say, suppose yields go up by one and two and three and four percent, or they go down by one and two and three or four percent in years one, two, three and four. What's going to happen to the price? So think of it as a very sophisticated spot curve. Let's just say it's an upward sloping spot curve, very sophisticated embedded inside of that Excel spreadsheet so that you can come up with potential prices for the bond and the bond portfolio for each of our clients. Ah, this is super cool stuff. Now, what we can do is we can go back and we can use that purple formula or, or we can say, you know what, let's be a little bit more sophisticated. Let's go ahead and let's call this an annual modified duration. And that's only uh, relevant if we have uh, a bond that pays interest maybe two times a year or four times a year. I'm guessing that the Institute is probably going to do an annual uh, an annual pay bond on the exam because it's it's way more simple and the Institute has far better questions than to have you bogged down in uh, those kinds of calculations, which really which really are just, you know, kind of like dividing by two or dividing by four. But here's this equation here. So we need to calculate this modified duration. So look in the numerator. We have PV and a minus and a PV and a plus. So these are bond prices. So bond price PV minus is the bond price if the yield falls. What happens? We know the bond price goes up. And the PV plus is if the yield goes up, that means the bond price goes down. So that numerator will always be positive. 
And then we're going to divide by 2 times the change in yield. And make sure you have the decimal form of that change in yield. So if the, if the yield goes from 10% to 10.5%, that change in yield would be 0 0.005. And then we multiply it by the current price level. Okay, so there's a really good formula for, for you to memorize. Now, what the Institute doesn't, uh, and I'm surprised that it doesn't emphasize this in this reading, it does it in future readings, is that we use that equation right there for bonds that have embedded options, like a call option or a conversion option. Uh, skip down to the bottom, I'll show you how, uh, how this is used. So look at uh, the example. Let's suppose we have a bond with a modified duration of five, all right? And a 5% change in price if the yield rises by 100 basis points. What we can do is we can form a linear approximation for this non-linear price yield relationship. So that example there, that's how we're going to interpret uh, this modified duration. We're going to look exactly at what happens to price. Now, I'm going to put this in parentheses. Are you ready for this? What we're doing is we're offering a linear approximation. And this is good for small changes in the yields. But if we have large changes in the yields and we have lots of convexity in the bond, we're going to have to perform a convexity adjustment. Now, I just say that now to warn you about what's going to happen in the next learning module. Here's a good example here. Macaulay duration of 623, quarterly coupon, yield of 5. What's the modified duration? All we're going to do is we're going to take that uh, yield of 5%, divide it by 4, put it in the denominator. So a Macaulay duration, which we calculated back in that previous learning module of 623, now reduces to 6153. Now notice what we're doing with modified duration. All we're doing is dividing by one plus an interest rate. Now here we're adjusting it over quarterly coupons. But think of modified duration as a present value of the Macaulay duration. So it's always going to be just a little bit less, right? Depends on the absolute value of the yield to maturity. Now, how about this concept of a dollar duration or a money duration? What we're going to do is say, let's suppose that the yield changes. Uh, what is the dollar impact on our bond or our portfolio? So there are some boxes in there that are summarizing what I was saying to you in that previous one. But let's go ahead and look at example two at the top. Let's suppose we have a 4% coupon rate, price of 102. Of course, that means that the par value is 100. Modified, modified duration of 5.5. Calculate the money duration. I mean, this is super simple. All we're going to do is take that modified duration of 5.5, multiply it by 102. We get 561. So I want you to think about that money duration as kind of like a total number, but then we need to adjust it by the change in yield. And so the convention is to say, boy, what happens if we have a 1% change in the yield. In this case, let's go ahead and say, what about a rise in the yield? That means just take 1% of that 561. So if you see the convention here, if you do the 1%, just move the decimal over two places. And what's going to happen is that we're going to say the bond price is going to decrease by $5.61. So the price of this bond now, it used to be 102. Now it's going to be 102 minus the 561. So let's make sure you understand what we just did. We could have computed that new price by using the kindergarten model. We could have computed it using the spot curves, but this is a more accurate way to compute the new price of the bond. Then what we can do is we can granularize, is that a word? We can take this more to a granular level by this uh, price duration or the price value of a basis point. And what this means is just, just one basis point. Not a, We do 100 basis points in that second example, just one basis point. Look at the bottom there, suitable for bonds with unpredictable cash flows. Those are the bonds that have embedded uh, options like a callable bond. Let me show you just a quick example here. Let's suppose that we have 
five-year bond yield of 3.2%. So the question then becomes, what happens? What happens if the yield increases or decreases by just one basis point? So the bond price will decrease to 100.46. It will increase to 100.55 when the yield goes up or down. So then the uh, price value or the present value of a basis point well, remember what I said earlier, that numerator is always going to be positive. So we take the 155 minus the 146 uh, and divide by 2. So there you go. The present value of a basis point is 0 0.045. Now let's look at the second uh, LOS, Properties of Duration. Uh, you probably know these things, but let's go ahead and make sure. What are the relationship between the bond features and duration? If the coupon rate is lower, that means that the duration is longer. If the yield to maturity is lower, that means that the duration is longer. If the time to maturity uh, is longer, that means that the duration is longer. And so that makes perfect sense. So let's do those three first. So if the coupon is lower, what does that mean? That means that you're going to have a lower coupon to reinvest. Remember that example that I gave you uh, uh, back in the interest rate risk uh, learning module? We had a 15-year bond and the duration was nine years. So a lower coupon is going to extend that total duration out. Same thing with the yield to maturity because of the reinvestment assumption and then the time to maturity. What did I say to you back then, and I'll repeat it, that longer term bonds have uh, longer durations. But then we need to refine this relationship by looking at what happens in between bond coupon payments. So if the proportion of the current coupon period that has elapsed, that's the lowercase t over the uppercase t, well then that's an inverse relationship, then the duration will fall. So here's a, a nice summary page. In fact, you might want to get your phone out and take a picture of this. So longer time, lower coupon, lower yield. That's a higher or a longer duration, which means, and this is important, more interest rate risk. And then just the opposite. If you've got the shorter time, if you have a higher coupon and a higher yield to maturity, you have a shorter duration, which means less interest rate risk. So I like the red and the green boxes as potential exam questions. Um, you know, it's one thing to say longer time, higher duration, but then it's another thing to go ahead and make the concluding statement that we have either the uh, higher duration or lower duration. And that takes us through uh, these two really, really good learning outcome statements. I want you to go to the end of this learning module, work on those handful of questions. You'll need to calculate some things, so it might take you close to 10 minutes. There's just a handful of them there. Uh, so, hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day and good luck studying.